and he has increased. And that's what ultimate love and maturity leads as a picture, as a person in Christ, is that very thing, is the bride is not satisfied with the current relationship they have. The bride is not satisfied. She wants more. She wants him. She wants to know him more. That's the whole point of the Shulamite. And you'll read it next week. She takes great encouragement that he loves her, and she responds back. And um, we are thrilled by the things of Christ, but it's not the things that he has that really makes us really complete. It's him. The giver, not the gifts. The blesser, not the blessings. And real maturity is when you get to that point in your Christian walk. It's to seek Christ, not for what he can do for you, or what he can give you. You're not a mercenary, you know, just getting what you need from him. But reality is just having him. The greatest treasure you'll ever have is not what Christ can give you. The greatest treasure you'll ever have is him. And he's entrusted himself to us. Believe that when you entrust yourself to Christ, he entrusts himself to you. It's a committed relationship. He literally entrusts himself to you in a relationship. That means that you're committed, I'm committed. Let's do it together. Let's walk together. Let's grow together. Let's love together. And so James knew this quite well. And he says, hey, you know what? If you draw near to God, he will draw near to you. Very encouraging things to hear. And so the relationship begins to grow, and you begin to seek the Lord just for who he is. The blessings, great. Praise the Lord. If, if riches increase, Solomon said, don't set your heart on them. It's nice, but it's not the end all of end all. The end all of end all is him. Him, him, him. And that's where she got the point. See, this is later on in the book of Solomon. She gets the point. The point is not, he's such a great guy, and he blesses me, and he's got all this stuff, and he's the king. The idea here, he is, I am his. His desire is for me. He really loves me. And the greatest, the greatest revelation you'll ever have as a Christian is that how much Christ would love us, despite of all the things that I've done to him. I've done things to the Lord unimaginable. And he's never done that to me. He's never treated me like I treated him. Do you realize that about Jesus? <laughs> he's never treated you the way I've treated him. How does he do that? Such great is his love. Think of all the things I've done. We were talking with the man on uh, Monday, right? All the things we've done to the Lord. Our failures, our fallings, our shortcomings. And yet the Lord's never behaved like that toward us. Isn't that amazing? Such great is his love. And so the Shulamite is overwhelmed. He's like, she can't believe it. And she just says, his desire is for me. And she's like overwhelmed. <laughs> she's spent. Now I'm going to read to you a couple of them. Just think of the Lord, what he said about these verses. Um, in 1 John chapter 3, I read one of them to you. That was 1 John chapter 4. But in 1 John chapter 3, we're told this. It's a beautiful chapter. In chapter 1, uh, verse 1, See how great a love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called the children of God. And such we are. For this reason the world does not know us, because they did not know Him. For this is the message, verse 11, which you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. We should love one another. 1 John 4, 7 Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God, and everyone, who's love, everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. The one who does not love does not know God, for God is love. By this, the love of God was manifested in us, that God sent his only begotten Son into the world so that we may live through him. That's why love's so important. Romans 13, Paul says, of all the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not commit sexual immorality. And it's all, the law, all, the, all the law is summed up in this. Love thy neighbor as yourself. And it says, if any other commandment, he says, is fulfilled in this, love fulfills the law. 
because love does no harm to its neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Incredible. Incredible chapter that you hardly can even withstand it without saying hallelujah. That I could fulfill the high standard and calling of God, his perfect law, by his love. His love in me and my love for him demonstrated in loving others can fulfill the law of God. Man, truly is an amazing thing. And of course, the warning is, don't let your love grow cold. If you have such great love, don't let it grow cold. Matthew 24, in the last days, the love of many will wax, grow cold. It's true, it's going to happen. The word is agape. It's going to happen among believers. It is a prophecy, but it doesn't have to happen to you. That's the point. It is going to happen, but it doesn't have to happen to you. When you leave your love, Ephesians, uh, to the letter to the, uh, to the Ephesians in Revelation, when you, leave, when you left your love, your first love, you lose your love for Christ, you lose your love for one another, eventually you lose your love for the lost. And eventually you see it in Laodicea, how it worked out in Laodicea. Don't let your love grow cold. But fervent love, grow that fervent love passionate love, and you wouldn't have to worry about falling away from the Lord or growing away from Christ if we continue in his love, First John says. Continue in his love. And his love, you read all about it in Song of Solomon. His love is for you. His love is for you. Let's pray. Lord, in Jesus' name, I thank you for the love that you have for us, Lord. I thank you that is undeserved, unmerited, I can't imagine if we had to work for it, Lord, how little we would have left. But Lord, thank you that your delight is upon your people. Your pleasure is upon your people. That, Lord, in, in Isaiah 53, it tells us that uh, through the travail of your soul will bring delight, and he'll save many. Lord, an amazing chapter of Isaiah, how through your suffering you will bring many to righteousness. Thank you, Lord, that you delight in your people and you bring about a real relationship caused in us, Lord, through the Holy Spirit. And um, I thank you, Lord, that we can respond to that love. Help us to love one another, Lord, as you loved us. Help us not to love in hypocrisy, Lord, just to pretend one thing and be another one. Help us not to love without affection. Help us just not to love with just words, Lord, but with deeds, real action, real truthful actions. Lord, change us. We really have so much to learn about love. We really have so much to learn about your love in us. But Lord, as we're learning, help us to be like Shulamit when she said, my beloved is, I am my beloved, and his desire is for me. Thank you, Lord, that that's your desire is to see your people loving you, loving each other in such a way that all marriages, Lord, can be fixed if they're to love one to another and consider the other person more important than themselves. Lord, I pray for our singles and I pray for our married couples as well and bring them to a greater knowledge of you, a greater purity in their faith, a greater purity in their affection and relationships that they have with each other. Lord, we just commit ourselves to you today. In Jesus' name.